Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of the From Nothing to Scratch Golf Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Smart. This first episode, we're going to be talking about how to get into caddying. To talk about that, we've got two professional caddies with over 22 years experience between them. Caddied in all the majors, including the Masters, uh, the Eurasia Cup, the Ryder Cup, uh, Seve Trophy. So lots of experience experience, and hopefully some good stories. Uh, I'm obviously not quite used to this yet, so you have to bear with me. First episode, see how we get on. Should be good though. Uh, I should also mention that the two caddies are on our caddy experience as well, which we've just started. So you can actually book them out for a day. Um, you can check this out later with more details, but they'll go through everything on the range with you and on the course, course management, and you'll come away with a plan of how to really improve your game. Um, just like the experience of pros get, you know, in terms of on course with their caddies. So if you are interested in that after this, please go check that out on the From Nothing to Scratch website. It's just from nothing to scratch dot com. Uh, but without further ado, let's get started and get our guests involved. Right. Here we are. Oh, Rice is taking his bottle. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All good. So we've got Jonathan Smart here, Chris Rice there in the bottom. Um, let's get started. So talking about how to get into caddying. So I don't know if you guys, one of you wants to go first, maybe talk about that and your experience of how you've got, got into caddying. Yeah. Go on, drama. <laughs> I think... Um, I think everyone's got different ways of getting into caddying. Obviously, we get asked quite a lot, you know, people that want to start out and everything like that. But um, how I got into caddying is, is Ricey got me my first job. Um, obviously, we, I know we've discussed it before, but he gave me a call um, about working for Gracie on a Sunday evening, just out of nowhere um, on Challenge Tour. And, and I flew out Tuesday morning. And got started, and, and it was kind of like a little one-week trial, two-week trial, and ended up doing a full season for him. And then, you know, kind of led on to European tour. But I think lots of people ask, what's the way into caddying? Is there an official way? There is really no official way. Um, I think just the best thing you can do is is kind of start somewhere, whether that's you're a pro if you're in in the UK or some mini tours, wherever that might be. Um, there's plenty of guys out there plenty of pros out there who want to get better and uh do things properly and um i think just starting on on your mini tours and working your way up really i don't know if ricey sees it differently but i think if you speak to the majority of caddies on on tour they've all got different ways how they got into it yeah no no i agree no i agree i think uh i mean as as smart he's just said a prime example of getting into it was was how i started really um, obviously Smarty got into it from, from me caddy and I was good pals with Gracie and he needed a caddy and obviously me and Smarty are good mates so I sort of put him forward and, and he got in it that way and for me I got in it through uh, through when I was playing amateur golf I used to play a lot with Dave Horsey um, and obviously in these some of these big events when uh, when I was having the weekend off for playing pretty poorly in the first two rounds I was drafted in uh, to do a bit of caddying, um, which was uh, not not my idea of fun at the time, but uh, for having the weekend off. But uh, but yeah, that's how I started. And then uh, I done a couple of a couple of amateur events with Dave, and then uh, he got an invite into uh, a challenge tour event at Wesley Marriott um, when he was an amateur. Uh, and <laughs> quite a funny story actually. I uh, I caddy the first two rounds. And I think we were tied for the lead or maybe one off the lead. Um, and then after the, after the second round, I, I sort of slipped in that I was having the weekend off because I had a, I had a county game from, uh, for Lancashire. So I, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he weren't too best pleased. Um, but yeah, he finished, he finished top five in his, in his first event as a, well, in his first pro event as an amateur. Um, was, he, and then was, if, he, was he what? Was he still amateur when you caddied? He was still amateur, yeah. Ah, so you just um, looked at you were a pro and he got a check, wouldn't you? 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if, it, if, he, if, he, if he was a pro, I would probably would have sacked the county game off and stayed the weekend. <laughs> um, well, yeah, obviously then I got a phone call a few weeks later to carry for him at Walker Cup. Um, obviously Great Britain and Ireland v America over in Royal County Down. Um, he was obviously got top point scorer there and then we went straight to to tour school, European tour school at St. Anne's Old Links, first stage, uh, which he won, which was quite a nice feeling. Um, first first event really as a pro. And then, yeah, took it from there, got a few invites on Challenge Tour. Um, so won twice on Challenge Tour and got his main tour card. And away you go. It sounds like as well, you mentioned there, Ricey, and uh, you kind of maybe missed it out, Jonathan, but a big thing also is your experience before actually starting as a caddy. You know, you've obviously gained your knowledge from the game before yeah. going as a caddy. You know, you, you both, uh, both had you go at, at, at golf yourselves and um, obviously learnt a lot from that. Uh, you, you've got to get your knowledge somewhere, I'm guessing, haven't you? Absolutely. I mean, listen, we're all when 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 you're down to scratch and you're off plus figures, you all have a you all have a good knowledge of the game. You all know how to play it. You have a you have a good understanding, and then obviously you just take that into caddy, and obviously then you start gaining your experience over the years. Like, listen, I'm I'm experienced, but I'm not as experienced as these guys that have been out of here twenty, thirty years. You know what I mean? So we're even though I've been out of here what, 13 years now, I'm still, I'm still learning the game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I always, there's always room for, for, for improvement. And you can, I can never stand here and say, well, because I've won, I've won golf tournaments, well, I've won golf tournaments with the, the guys that I've worked for, that that's it. I'm not, I can't really learn anymore. So we're all, we're all still learning. And even the guys that have been out here 30 years, they're still learning. Yeah, I think, different I, think players. That's one, I don't know if you agree, guys, but that's one thing that really shocked me is, you know, obviously, you get to a pretty good standard playing yourself, and you, you know, someone says, "Go, oh, come and caddy for you," and and stuff, and you think, "Well, yeah, this, you know, I've, I've played to a good standard. Yeah, this, I should, I should be able to do this quite easy." But you soon find out you've got a lot to learn. Oh, and, absolutely, and yeah. Obviously, that learning comes from mistakes, but um, I didn't realize when I started that how much I was missing playing. You know, in, in the sense that how much strategy and how how unaware yeah. a situation when I were playing. As soon as you start caddying, you you see things a lot clearer, I think, than than sometimes when when the clubs in your own hands. Maybe that's why I was having a lot of weekends off. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I sh- maybe I should have took a different route. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing you said to me though, Jonathan. I remember with this. Uh, you know, the from nothing to scratch kind of challenge is go caddy for some people, which I've done. And it's surprising how much you can really see it so much clearer, like course management and strategy. Obviously, I've still not maybe got it right, but it's still easier to see maybe well, you just think, when you're on the bag. Just think, well, just think a lot clearer. I don't, I don't think there's a much, as much emotion attached to the shot um, when you're not hitting it. Um, I think when you're talking through shots for someone else, you 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 try your best to make it a lot simpler, and you, chances are you usually see uh, the right decision a little bit easier instead of I don't know trying to smash driver over a dog leg into a fairway that's only 15 yards wide on an angle. You know you might just keep it simple. You might hit three iron to the corner and nine iron on the green. You know, where that, they're the sort of things that, well, for me, I made so many mistakes as a player. Because um, I just, I think it's a lot harder to think clearer when, you, when you're playing yourself. Uh, and, and like I say, some of the mistakes you make and you're aware of, when you start caddying, you're like, yeah, I know, I know if the club was in my hand, I wouldn't be seeing it like this. Yeah. So do you think maybe on the topic as well, that's something that people could do if they are interested in trying to get into caddying, is actually just go out and caddy for people. I mean, wh- whoever it is, in a way. Do you think that's something that could help them? Hundred percent. I think if you've got good players at your club, or whether it's you know you've got team matches for your club, um, go and go and caddy for one of those guys or something before you get started. But um, 
I think just, yeah, any experience is good experience. But like I say, I think also part of traveling is uh, part of caddying on tour is you, you, you've kind of got to be on a tour to get used to all the travel and, you know, what goes into stuff and, and everything like that. And what about, what about you, Rice, in terms of like beginning in the early days as well? I know hearing from Jonathan as well, it's, it's not just straightforward in terms of, right, you're a caddy now and you obviously, you're not making money, uh, you know, like loads of money at the beginning, depending on who you're with and things like no, that. Exactly. And I think, I think for me at the start, obviously, um, when I was, when I first started uh, caddying, I was, uh, Dave was obviously still an amateur and I was still playing the game, but obviously I was working, I was still working in the pro shop. Do you know what I mean? I was I was doing sort of thirty five hours a week in the pro shop, playing my tournaments on a weekend, and then uh, when Dave asked me to carry for uh, in a few events, then sort of took holidays, and then uh, yeah, when he turned pro and he asked me to carry for him uh, full time, then then yeah, I mean it's hard because when you're not making much money uh, in the pro shop and and you're trying to juggle a few things together. Um, as well as playing, going into caddying and and the and the money that's involved in caddying, if you if you're successful, is 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 a great is a great bonus. And for me, like starting at the beginning, it's it's hard because you're, you're traveling a lot. You're not making any money unless you guys winning. Um, but I remember my first. I remember my first paycheck. Whoa. after after making 150 quid a week, <laughs> to making like. To making like fifteen hundred quid was like, whoa, how good's this? And you get you get a bit of a bug for it, but it's hard. You have to make a lot of sacrifices. Um, yeah. It's not just like right, there you go, go and caddy. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot more to it. Like you travel, and you've obviously if you've got family and stuff like that, it's it's tough. Yeah, and you but had very, some... but very, but very enjoyable at the same time. I suppose that's the great thing, and that you both obviously love the game, so you you're staying around the game. And... You're gonna enjoy it, right? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I mean it's great. Yeah. The one thing for me, like obviously playing playing the top top amateur events like the Spanish amateur and the English amateur and the British. I think the next the next best thing to play in is 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 caddying because you're involved in it. You sort of get the buzz from the from from the the, the people around you, and obviously going to events that you've watched on on the TV is. It's great. It's good, great to, to be around. What about you, John? When when do you think maybe you you thought? Because I know you had some struggles at the beginning as well. But like the caddying was 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 it? You know, was really the future type thing for you? Um. I, well, it's probably similar to to Ricey in a sense. Like I remember we went down to play. I turned pro. And we went down to play a tour in Spain, and I was down with Sam. Hey, we'll do caddies for Dan now, actually. Uh, and Matt Evans, and we're playing this tour. And I'd, I'd not been doing that well, to be honest, and, and struggling, trying, try you know, working my arse off, but not really getting anywhere. And I remember Dan flew out because the weather was, uh, wasn't very good um, in England. So he flew out for a few days to practice. So we went and played this course, and I, I just caddied for him. And I was like, I just, I, I just got a bit sick of golf. So I was like, I'll just caddy for you for nine holes. I remember he had this, uh, we'd, be, we'd been playing this corner, I think it was called El Valley or something like that. And there was this bunker at 295 on the corner. Well, we, we'd all been playing right of it down the back part of the fairway. And he just stood up and not even warmed up that much and just smoked this driver straight over the corner. And, that, and that's when I kind of realised, listen, I love the, I really love the game. But it's time know, to switch. <laughs> not kind of where I need to be. <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> I might need to rethink this. But, you know, I think, I, well, I did start for, for Gracie, but I did one event for Dan in Morocco just as a one-off. And um, basically, caddying for me is is the closest, like Rice touched on it earlier, it's the closest you can get to doing it without hitting the golf ball yourself. You still get some unbelievable experiences. You get to go to all these amazing events. You're inside the ropes. Um and you get a frontline seat within reason to to watch some pretty impressive stuff. Well, um, closest and to it, sure. These guys, you know, when you you know how much pressure these guys are under on certain shots, and you know some tee shots look awkward or whatever it might be, 
And when you when you stood there and, and they end up smoking it down the fairway or all in a putt when they really need to, it's it's good. Just get that buzz from it still. Yeah. yeah. So maybe another question as well. Would you recommend someone getting into caddy? Like who's it for? Maybe it's another a pro that's in a pro shop right now, or something like that. Do you think it's someone is it for everyone or you know? I, I think you just got to. You've got to, if you if you're thinking about it. I think you've got to try it. You got you don't you don't know until you've tried it. But some people, you know, like caddies who've been out there for years, like I said, they've all come from different backgrounds and different experiences and stuff. Um, some people love it. Some people find it hard being away from home. All sorts of different things. I think you can't just say it's for everyone because I I don't I don't think it is. But um, there's definitely massive highs and lows. I'm sure Grice will agree. Like when it's good, I, I personally don't think there's a better job in the world. But you know, when you're having a bad run and you're away from home and stuff, it's it's quite tough. Yeah, yeah, so, no, I agree. Another question we got um, was uh, how maybe you think caddying might have changed if it, if you think it's changed at all while you've been there or from before. Uh, if you want to answer that one, Ricey. Uh, I mean, I come out. I come out in two thousand and seven, um, and to be on and to be honest, there wasn't very many young guys out here when I come out. The a lot of the guys on the European tour were also older guys, a bit more of ex- experienced guys, and and listen, they had their way of doing things because obviously over the years before we even before we even born, probably um, some of the stories you hear are how they used to how they used to caddy, how they used to make the yardage books. Like they used to, they used to work their asses off. Them guys, like with peace. I remember Billy Foster telling me a story in South Africa how he measured this par three over a gator trap, and he had like a piece of string that he tied on the tee, and he sort of walked a string around this gator trap and over this gator trap to the green, and he worked out the elevation. And we don't, we don't need to do that these days. You know what I mean? We have a bushnell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds, and you get, um, away, away you go. So we don't, we don't realize how lucky I. But as I say, like when in two thousand and seven, when I obviously got on tour and the yardage books and stuff, and I think over the years, uh, the yardage books have got better. So um, guys out there are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable because they've got all the information that they need. They don't sort of listen. Everyone says, "Oh, they, anyone can come out and carry for for whoever." Yeah, they can do, but it's saying the right stuff at the right times, which makes the difference between caddies sometimes. And I think, um, obviously, the yardage books makes a massive difference. They've changed dramatically over the past 12 years. Um, and you're starting to see a lot of, a lot of guys bringing their friends out and who are ex-golfers. And listen, it's great. There's a, there's a good group of young guys out there. And also, there's a, there's a lot of good older guys out there as well who sort of, took me under the wing when I was when I first come out because obviously there weren't many young guys out there you don't really know anyone you're like a deer in the headlights sort of thing um, and they sort of took you under your wing and, and sort of told you how to how to go about things and stuff and I think I think it it's changed a little bit since I come out but I don't think it's changed as like if you spoke to an older caddy who's been out there for 30 years he'd be able to say well the difference is is ridiculous from one yeah. end of the scale to the other end so I'm sort of lucky that I've had a lot of good things going since I've been out of here so yeah. that's my that's, that's my view on it anyway I don't know what what smart he thinks since he's been out yeah, I'm the same. I mean I, I was what three four three and a half years after you when I started yeah and yeah. so I, I agree I don't think it's changed massively from what I've seen but you know you speak to your Billy Fosters and, and people like that and, and they'll probably go yes yeah, Changed dramatically. I mean, I remember some older boys showing me the yardage books, like you said, like what they used to make, and it's it's crazy to think that they have to, you know, how much time that must have taken each week. Um, now we don't have to worry about things like that. But I think from a player's perspective, I think it must be it's perfect because there's so there's such a variety of caddies who do things different ways, and yeah, um, the job's very similar, but there's certain differences. I mean. From a player's perspective at this moment in time, I would have thought it's great because there's a real variety of caddies to choose from for what you want because ultimately, in my opinion, I just don't, 
I don't think one caddy can work amazing with every sort of player. I think you find your yeah. players that you can and can't work well with. Um, and sometimes, you know, you don't know that before you start, but um, I think you find over time there's certain caddies that work well with a certain sort of player and, and, and so on. So, um, but yeah, I think as regards caddy and changing, I think some of the older boys will, will definitely change, tell you that it's changed dramatically. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, we've got the caddy experience as well. Uh, just drop that in there, which both of you two will be, uh, will be doing. Uh, I suppose that's a way people can also learn about caddying, obviously from your experience, because I suppose going on to the topic of how to get into it, something that yeah. obviously you've had, Jonathan, is uh, if Ricey got you into it, you've got people that have you know, just pointed you in a bit of a direction or someone to talk to about it. I don't know whether you were the same getting into that, Ricey, as well, if you had anyone, but. Yeah, well, like I said to you, I was I was quite fortunate at the time because obviously I played a lot of golf with Dave, and I sort of that's the reason that's the reason I got into. Uh, so, listen, I get I get messages all the time asking like to give the best advice on how to get into caddying, and I say the same thing to everyone. I'm like, you've got a, it's so hard for you to to go straight on the European Tour or the PGA Tour. I always say, listen, go to tour school and do a bit of do a bit of club caddy and maybe and just get a bit of experience and then go to tour school and try try your luck there. And I think once you get your face out there, I think it makes life a lot easier. I think the hardest part is just getting there. But listen, everyone's got to start somewhere, haven't they? Because we, that's yeah, what I, we I, did. Yeah, I agree. If I had not gone to Challenge Tour first, I think, and just gone straight to Main Tour, I think I could have struggled. Because you, your mistakes when you get to European Tour are costly because, yeah. you know, you get found out really quick. Whereas Challenge Tour, you, you're, at least you're eased in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so you, need to, you need to start somewhere and get some experience. Yeah, for sure. Maybe that's a good, uh, good place to sum it up then, do you think? Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, add to that. No, I think that's good. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, exactly. I think everyone will sort of get the general idea how, how sort of me and Smarty got into it. Um, and yeah, as we said, if the questions we get asked about how to get into it, just go do some club carrying, go do, go to tour school and just get some experience and just work your way up the ladder. That's the, that's the advice I would give to anyone um, trying to do it. But listen, it's a lot of fun when you get out there. Just be, be prepared to make a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. But which the rewards are, are, can be pretty good. So, brilliant. Right. Well, cheers, guys. And uh, we're going to do another one about the caddy experience as well. Uh, I think next week, aren't we? Something like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, great. I think cheers, cheers should... Mark. Looking forward to caddying for you, mate. <laughs> cheers, pal. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Yeah. See you, boys. Thanks, everyone, for listening or watching if you're on YouTube. This is our first episode. Hopefully, we're going to have more of these, some interesting topics. I hope you've got a bit of information from this, especially if you're interested in getting into caddying. Please subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next episode.